Today we're going to show you the final stages of bin clean out. Randall knew we were coming, so they saved just a little bit for all of you to see. I don't have a mask on, but I'm only going to be in here a couple of minutes. So this is a sweep auger. That shield on the back kind of keeps the corn going in front of it. We used to not have a shield when I was a kid. This makes it a lot easier. So what they do is they take, they clean up behind the thing as it goes around. Three people is optimal. Two on the shovels and one on the broom. If you take a look at this corn, you'll see that each kernel is dry and hard. It will be used either for animal feed or for corn chips, corn tortillas, or cornmeal. So this corn's been in here a year. Just a few days short of a year. This particular grain bin was built in probably 75, maybe 77. There were three grain bins here and I didn't even pay attention to which one we're in. It holds about 10,000 bushels. At the time, that seemed like a, a big grain bin. Nowadays, they can fill 10,000 bushel bin in one day. Now, we get to the last of the corn here, there'll be a lot more dust mixed in. The pink stuff that you see, we call bees wings. They're red, like the color of the cob, and sometimes they come off with the kernels rather than staying on the cob. Farmers choose to store grain for a few reasons. First, it improves the efficiency of the harvest. They can harvest after hours, continuing to unload the trucks long after the elevator closes. There's also a financial advantage, as grain prices are usually the lowest right during the harvest season. My family can't store all of their grain, but they can store some of now, it. Now, when they start this, we didn't get to see the whole pile, but it'll be piled up about two and a half, maybe three rings there, and sloping all the way down. So we're, we're getting the last little bit. They saved a little of it so we could see it on video. When you first start unloading the corn here, you just open up this chute in the bottom and it feeds out. And when they finally get down to the point where it won't flow anymore on its own, that's when they need to start that sweep auger. So this, this sweep auger doesn't run until that very last bit. There's a, they can shift the, tran there's a transmission in there where they can shift the gear to turn on the sweep. So it's just gravity flow to start with right into that middle hole. There's an auger under this false floor that takes it out and then up and into the truck. That's why it seems to be disappearing into nowhere there. You might ask about the masks. There's nothing really toxic about this dust, but it sure can be rough on your sinuses. This bin is 30 feet in diameter. If I remember right, it will hold 560 bushels of corn per foot. Up in the top there, you see a spreader, and that thing spins around when they drop the corn in from the top to, to make the corn go to the outside edges. This is going to be a partial load, so they divide it between the front hopper and the back hopper of the trailer. Randall had estimated that there was 500 bushel left before this load. The final ticket showed 499.6. He was quite proud of his estimation skills. Ready? They'll clean it all out before they get done. They try to sweep out essentially every kernel. Then it'll be ready for the next year's corn. So that lever re controls those uh, extra holes on the side, right? And this the center one, gate. This one's the center here, the small one. And I can put my pin in for the this bigger pipe on the outside pulls the intermediate wheel. And then the sweep is controlled actually over there. Down here. Yep. Pull it out to engage it. It's cogs that engage the catch in there. Uh-huh. Is this the last time we're running? Yeah. Yeah, this grain bin was built in 1975. So as I recollect, it was 73 for the first one. 75. 76 for that one, I believe. 
So it looks like not all the bins have the spout out. So how do they get cleaned out of the other bins? Hey, that's a good question. They're actually moving away from these vertical spouts like this. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, it's, it's slow uh, because it has to auger straight up. The other thing is, is it's not easy on the grain. The grain has a hard time going straight up. Well. So what they're moving toward is using these type of uh, spouts here and then using a regular grain auger, like one of their big 14 inch augers. Oh, okay. And with that approach, they, they're out there a good ways, number one, but number two, they never have to go straight up with the grain. It's a lot more gentle on the grain. Makes more sense. But this is the way they were originally. And this is actually an upgraded spout here. It's an eight inch. They used to have six inch vertical. And it took an hour to load a, a semi with one of those. Wow, that can really slow down your productivity. Absolutely. So you can even see on the next bend down, you can see the two rails where they yeah. used to have an upright. Well, that's why I kind of asked the question because I can tell they used to do it out of that one, but. And I believe this upright here, it almost looks like they're using this same upright on the far bend down there and moving it down there. Okay. It's possible that they're still doing that. Boy, Andrea is quite the trooper. Yeah, she gets in there and she's here for the bend sweeping every time. Yeah. That's her job. Even now that she's married. She has to come home to the Yeah. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed watching this bin clean out. If you have trouble reading all the Bible verse before it flies by, just press the pause button. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Well, we got a cool to get out, right? Yes, we do. When I come to the farm, I bring food with me. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording.